We're going to take a look in this video at using the citator from RAA in order to figure out if a case that we're looking at here might be something we want to rely upon in our dispute with the IRS or maybe if it's one that we need to back off on. And this actually came up when I was reviewing and doing the weekly update uh, that involved a particular case here where the case of in this particular case, the IRS in the case of the Harrison case from the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Wisconsin in late January, in January of 2020, the, there's an issue that a key item was missed by all parties because they didn't really follow up and notice things. And one of the things which we point out was that, uh, that's pointed out in the case, is the Department of Justice counsel became aware of a case that was contrary to what they were pushing, their position, and they failed to notice that the IRS Treasury had actually conceded that issue, an action on decision, and in fact had modified a regulation in basically to comply with that, which would have resolved the entire matter. As it turned out in that case, the actual opinion got issued in favor of the IRS uh, you know, in essence, in favor of the IRS in the theory that they did not follow the reg, you know, saying that essentially the judge was not made aware of the reg, the reg was not followed, was not made aware of this case because the case was decided different circuit and Department of Justice had decided that it wasn't relevant in this circuit. And then it turned out later that uh, when the case got published that other counsel noted that the case was decided wrong because it was contrary to regulation and contrary to, part, to the Treasury Department's policy of not taking the very position that was taken in this case. So how do you, how do you use this thing? What is a citator and how do you use it? Now I'm going to say right up front, I use the Thompson products, Thompson Reuters products, and got to make sure on YouTube, we got to be very clear about this, I am not compensated by Thompson Reuters for this. In fact, for all practical purposes, Thompson Reuters sells continuing education as many ways as in competition with uh, myself and the organization I'm working with here for Kaplan. But in this case, they offer a product that I think is superior enough to the other uh, all the others that it's kind of important to understand how to use it if you do subscribe to their Checkpoint uh, products for purposes of research. Uh, we will hope you we will hope you use us for purposes of continuing education. But if you do their checkpoint research, why you need to know how to use this, it's really important if you when you get this with your subscription. And if you're not on checkpoint, uh, what you're missing, because realistically, the alternatives that we have, unless you go all the way to Shepherds, which is what this is based on, you're going to have a difficult time finding something equivalent. Certainly the products offered by the competing full service, uh, which is Commerce Clearinghouse, the old Commerce Clearinghouse, Walters Kluwers, is far inferior. And a lot of the less expensive services, they're wonderful, they do great, but they don't lack any citator whatsoever. So what in the world is a citator? Because a lot of people are probably wondering what that thing is. Well, a citator looks at a case. And the case I have up before you here on the screen is the case of the uh, Weisbart case, Weisbart versus United States. This was the case that became the issue in this particular decision in the Harrison case. This turned out to be where the answer lied and counsel for the taxpayer failed to notice the issue. Uh, the IRS internally didn't notice the issue. Department of Justice attorneys did become aware of this case, but they dismissed it because, as you'll notice, it was in the Second Circuit, and Wisconsin's not in the Second Circuit, so they decided that it was irrelevant since it didn't apply. But it turned out that, had you looked a little further, and you see this nice little button here that's right over here that says Citator. Okay, if you use this thing, now you might have said, look, you kind of understand annotations if you use U.S. tax report. I'm sure somebody does. If you have that, that'll work there. FTC is for the Federal Tax Coordinator. And that would give you the links over there for it. But this third button says Citator. If you click that button, we get this weird thing off to the side for links. And what it is, it's every case that this one's mentioned in. Now, in reality, this should have been, just doing this, if you were in Checkpoint, should have been enough to tell you there's something going on here because you see that action on decision that's down here in the bottom of this. That means Treasury has told us if they're going to follow this case or not. Might have been useful for them to follow up on that, Department of Justice. But understanding when you're reading RAA's cases, 
RIA in their cases puts in their head notes the key topics or the key issues in the case and they put a number by them those numbers become important because those numbers are going to be used by the citator to figure out essentially to give us a description as to whether what they're going to give us in the citator whether the cases and other documents they refer to here discuss this case favorably discuss it unfavorably or differentiate their case from this situation and in this particular case our key issue here is the issue number one which came down to whether if you filed your claim for refund right you didn't file your tax return and if you filed it late uh, can you essentially make use of what will become 7502's uh, mailbox rule for late filing right so we have this particular issue and it's kind of odd the way it's worded but that's really going to be our, our issue in this one the second issue is quasi related but it was a case where they threw out a second refund claim the taxpayer had uh, because in that case in Weiss, Weiss Bart, that one was done after the date and could, didn't, didn't make sense that it was implied by the one that was timely filed. That's a different issue. Now you do notice over here, it's a little confusing, we have four different Weiss Bart cases over here from the citator. And why we do is because there are four different opinions. And that's because this case went through the courts a couple of times. Right? What happens in this case, right, is it goes to the court first the district court then the taxpayer appealed the decision the appeal here is the one we've got before us when you look at this this is the one at the Second Circuit if you notice over here this one is the Second Circuit case then it goes back to the uh, district court in New York and then there's another hearing at the district court uh, held again we have two of these here this is the one we're interested in because this was the case was being cited and this is the one we have there so we click on this Weisbart opinion now, when you click on this, you'll see we now get taken to a screen, and this is the citator. What the citator does is list for us other cases and documents where this particular case has been referenced. And it may have been referenced favorably, it may have been referenced unfavorably, uh, you know, it may have been differentiated. Those are the key things. The first part of this tells you that, in fact, there are related cases. And these are, you'll see the other three cases are mentioned here and where they came. If they're the same case, if it's affirming, etc., how this works. They affirm the first case in this affirmed and reversed in part. They then have these two follow-up cases that came from it. There's also in related cases this thing called an action on decision, AOD. Again, Treasury doesn't issue these, but this is what they issue. Please notice here in our description, acquiesced. This is where they issue their acquiescence or non-acquiescence. And in this particular case, Treasury gave up on this issue back in 2000. That was a little factor that apparently nobody noticed in this case. Uh, it's a big issue. As I said, it looks like nobody noticed the Weisbart case to start. But then other big issue was once it was noticed by Justice Department, they didn't figure out that there was this other document related to it that the citator would have brought up. And again, we they're probably not, they might not be using RA Citator Second, but they're probably using the Shepard version of it, which is, as my understanding, is what this one is derived from. That's also owned by Thompson. Uh, so they probably should have figured out this was there. They didn't. They didn't check. In addition, if you follow the cases down, again, see all these cases. If the case as a whole is cited, and it talks about everything on the case, then you see this cited favorably right and you notice this case tells you it's a pretty big one because it keeps being cited favorably in various locations right and so that that's kind of important we have a favorable citation in all these various locations that we do but here's another interesting entry in this citator TD 8932 now you might not understand real quickly what that means but TD stands for Treasury decision Treasury decisions are how regulations are issued so this tells you that the first issue in this case, when you see the number, it means the issue number. The first issue in this case was cited favorably when the IRS issued this regulation in 2001. And if we bring that regulation up, the best thing I do here is I know Weisbart's been brought up here. So what I do is I just search for, search for the Weisbart case. There it is. And now it tells me that essentially in this notice, they were looking at whether these late filed returns should count with a mailing rule. They decided they will, and they specifically make their regulation consistent with 
the Weisbart case. So the IRS published a regulation, regulation 1.7502-1H is going to be found in here, that specifically provided that the late filed return, which is what Harrison did, we count the date as postmarked, which is the exact issue in the Harrison case, would have solved the entire deal. Now the big problem here is first, the, the judge really raked them over the coals, the uh, Justice Department for not pointing this case out to him. But the real interesting aside is, this case didn't have to develop at all. Had anyone noticed this issue, it would have stopped things in their tracks. The AOD probably by itself would have been enough because again, IRS people doing this now being told, wait, uh, basically we've already said that we're not gonna litigate on this issue. So, you know, we're, we're not going forward, we're not gonna take that position. But even better, the reg, which again, we find down here at the bottom, the regulation, well, that goes directly to the point in the case, could have been found. Now, why do I say this citator is better than maybe what you'll see in uh, the Walters Kluwer CCH version? The problem with the Walters Kluwer CCH version is, well, the first good part about it is it's free. The bad news about it is he might still be overcharged for it. What do I mean by that? The problem is it does not have this nice little line talking about cited favorably, distinguished, uh, cited, you know, they don't tell us how it's being cited. They don't break the issues down. So the problem is with the uh, CCH version is you pretty much have to go dig through every one of these cases. You can't quickly find the cases that, you know, the things that are probably relevant to you. For instance, when you say case distinguished, well, this says, look, how did somebody misuse the case? If it's distinguished, the court's going to explain why this fact pattern did not meet the requirements of the case. That's important. It also, as I said, it's missing these details, but definitely whenever you are going to rely on a case or other document, anything that's contained in the citator, you want to go ahead where you see the citator button in RA's checkpoint, click on it, go in here, and this will give you reference to other documents. First, it can help you if you're just trying to pile up the cases uh, to convince an agent. It can give you a whole bunch of extra cases to show the agent and maybe show the agent, you know what, the Ninth Circuit followed this from the Ninth Circuit. So you could pile them up that way, but it also will make sure you don't make a big mistake, miss something that's crucial, which is what happened in this case, or miss the fact the case you're relying upon was overturned, in which case then it's really not going to be any of use to you. So you need to take a look at what's going on. So hopefully we have now basically explained to you how the citator second works, and hopefully if you have an access to it, you're using it, you have a check, you're a checkpoint customer, you understand now why you should be using it, what the importance is. Because what I found is a lot of people, a lot of CPAs that I've worked with, it comes with it, but they have no idea what it is, how to use it. They don't open it. Obviously, in this case, uh, it appears nobody looked at it, you know, or nobody paid a lot of attention when they looked at it. Uh, and that's kind of an issue. Now, I'm not blaming the parties in this case because, gang, we all make mistakes. We're all under pressure. We all have time constraints. That happens. But it really can save a lot of time to go ahead and take a couple of minutes, bring up the citator, and it will help protect you from not making a major mistake or at least not ending up wasting lots of time, as it appears happened in this case, on an issue that could have been solved in a few minutes as opposed to getting all the way to a full-blown U.S. District Court case, filing all the motions, all the documents, and then a motion for, re motion for you know, basically opening back up reconsideration and final order. We could have had all of this taken care of much quicker. So important that you learn how you should use the citator and that you use it properly in those cases when it applies.